Well, everyone has failures, makes mistakes, but we can learn from them. Joining us today, Father David Rawson, after he's been reading a book, Right Kind of Wrong, The Science of Failing Well. So we can fail well, huh? That's I what the point so. is? I believe so. I believe so. At first, I didn't like the book. Okay. Um, but then I got into it, and I thought, this makes a lot of sense, a lot of sense. I was thinking about this because when I went, I had, I've had both knees operated on, my meniscus, meniscus, okay. I guess you'd say in the Latin. And so I remember going into it, before the surgery, the doctor asked me, he said, what knee are we going to operate on? <laughs> and I said, well, if you don't know, <laughs> I should be here. You know? so, but did you ever notice when they do operate on your knee, they ask you that question, first of all, mm -hmm. and then they'll put some, they, they mark, mark your it. knee with a magic yeah. marker. And the reason they've done that is what we call intelligent failures. In the past, people have made, people, uh, doctors or physicians or surgeons have operated perhaps on somebody and did the wrong surgery, uh, operate on the wrong knee, you took out the wrong kidney or something like that, you know. And so they've learned from their failures. It's called an intelligent failure. And Amy Edmondson is the one who's beginning to categorize these things as, as being beneficial for us because we're learning from our mistakes. But we live in a culture, don't we, Holly, where we don't want to admit any failure whatsoever. Exactly. And so we, she refers to that as aversion, uh, aversion to failure. This is why, for example, um, and among Catholics, for example, we have this sacrament called confession. Well, the numbers dropped over the years, people coming to reconciliation or confession because they couldn't possibly admit they failed in any way, shape, or form. And so things like this happen. We have this aversion. And so what, what uh, Amy is talking about is having a, a, she calls a psychological safety. She says when, for example, peers will get together and say to each other, we know we can fail. It's all right to fail if we learn from our mistakes, if we learn from the failure, and we create a climate of safety so people can say, yes, I failed in this regard or I failed in that regard. So we do this, for example, let's say in, um, in groups, for example, that come together having gone through a divorce or something like that, and they talk about their marriage and what may have happened in the marriage and what they can learn through that divorce or through that failure in the marriage. I just found it fascinating mm -hmm. um, when she talks about the various areas in which failure occurs and we're not even aware of it. Well, and, you know, you always hear that saying, you know, learn from your mistakes or whatever. But I think the culture, why is culture changed where we're not supposed to make any mistakes and, and admit it? Because I, I always think if you made a mistake, admit it. It makes it better for everyone. You're like, yep, I did that. Let's, you know, try to fix it or learn from it, you know? I'd like to think so, but that's not, we're not there yet in our culture. Right, no. We're not there yet in the culture. But those who are in positions of authority, for example, or positions of power, can create a climate in which they're going to, in which they can say, we, we can learn from these things, we're going to create a climate so you can speak up. It's not necessarily the whistleblowers, I think we use that term in, oh, right. a, yes. in, in a fashion whereby it's, mm -hmm. it's pejorative, but it's somebody saying, I saw this happening, it was not beneficial for people, and, and then consequently, if we can create that environment wherein we can talk about what happened without the fear of retaliation. So she was kind of focusing sometimes on the workplace too, but I mean, oh, yeah. you talked about personal relationships. I mean, you exactly. know, like that. So I guess she, it can she work. She covers in both the gamut. Things. She covers oh, she the does. entire okay. gamut of it. Not only she, her, her, she's at Harvard. She teaches at Harvard, and she teaches in the business school, I believe, at Harvard. She got her degrees there, and of course, Harvard's had some issues as of late, <laughs> haven't they? So people may say, "Well, I don't want to read something about this," but she's very good, very intelligent, and she's been able to hit the nail right on the head from my perspective, and that's why. That's you, why I recommend this book. You ended up liking book. it then. Well, that's, I'd recommend this book. A number of books I read in the summer, but I would recommend this book in particular. Okay. Sounds like a good one. Thanks, Father, for Thanks, coming. Thanks, Holly. Thank All you. All right. Don't go away. Neat Edition continues in a moment.